Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be a fun one. I'm going to share with you guys my most important makeup application tips, particularly for women over 40. I do get a lot of questions from women, usually my age, around the age of 40, that maybe they didn't wear a lot of makeup when they were younger, they had perfect skin and could just throw on some mascara and head out the door. That as they get older, they're finding themselves wanting to know more about using makeup but not really knowing where to start. So today I'm gonna to share with you guys basic makeup application tips that I have discovered over the years, particularly as I've gotten older. Some of this stuff might be obvious knowledge to you guys, but I'm hoping that even for those of you that are very into makeup that know what you are doing, maybe you'll pick up a couple tips along the way. We're not doing anything too crazy or fancy here today, just some basics, but guys, the basics are the best place to start. Before we get into the makeup, I wanna wish my new visitors here a special welcome. Thanks for joining me today. I hope that you enjoy this video. If you do, make sure that you subscribe before you leave and make sure notifications are turned on and with that said let's get started okay so we're gonna start with a primer I do have dry skin if you have dry skin I would recommend using a hydrating primer or an extra layer of just your favorite moisturizer say I'm using my milk makeup hydro grip primer two of my other favorites are the flower beauty priming whip and the Maybelline 4-in-1 perfector so I'm just using my hands for this just make sure your hands are clean I'm just going to apply this everywhere I think it is pretty common as you get older for your skin to dry out, so just make sure it is very well moisturized. So the first thing we're gonna tackle is foundation. And the most basic question, do you need foundation or not? There are a lot of women that don't wear foundation. I would say if you have a lot of general discoloration in all areas of your face that you would like to even things out, those are the people I recommend a foundation for. A good medium coverage just to even your skin tone out. If you find that you don't have a lot to cover, maybe you just have a couple of spots here and there, I would actually recommend skipping foundation altogether and just using your concealer where you need it. So today I am going to use a foundation. This is actually a BB cream. This is a Mise en Snell Repair BB cream. So I'm going to just apply this with my fingers today. You can use a sponge or a brush if you prefer. So I just have a little dollop right here. I'm just going to rub it between my fingers. Start on my cheeks. This is where I have the most discoloration. And then I just kind of spread it around. It's almost just like applying your moisturizer. If you are in a hurry, I would recommend using your hands. I think it's the fastest way to apply your foundation that gives you the best blend the most quickly. It can be a bit messy, so just make sure that you have a clean towel or rag on hand. So I kind of apply my foundation pretty much everywhere. I try to avoid my eyelids, and if you have a lot, a lot of fine lines and maybe sagging underneath your eyes right here, I would avoid putting your foundation there because we're gonna use concealer under there and you don't wanna layer up too many products and make it look too heavy or you're gonna get a lot of settling. So just put the foundation in the center of your face. So now that that's pretty much blended, I do often get, especially when I'm applying with my fingers, a little bit of gathering up along the hairline. So I just like to take a clean towel. You could also use a clean sponge and just blend out that area right there. You're almost just wiping it off right where it meets the hairline. You don't need the coverage there and it's just going to make the foundation look a little seamless. I also do it around my eyebrows where I can get a bit of gathering and then just kind of go back over Make sure everything is nice and blended. Next, we're going to apply some concealer. My number one tip with concealer for women that are over the age of 40 is only apply concealer if and when and where you need it. And don't apply too much. You do not need a lot. It is a high coverage product, so you don't need to layer too much on. I see a lot of women, especially that really like the full glam look, just swiping large swipes of concealer in certain areas. I cannot get away with doing that. It will look way too heavy on me. I much prefer just dotting it right where I need it. So I always need a little bit right here where I have a little bit of shadowing just in this little pocket right here. So I'll put some right there in that pocket and then just right here. I don't swipe all the way underneath my eye because I do have fine lines right here that things will kind of start to settle into. That said, I do have some discoloration just on the outer corners of my eye, so I'll add a little bit there as well. By the way, this is the Lancome Tante Idol, Lancome Tante Idol Concealer. It's a really good lightweight one that has great coverage. And then I just take it where I have some small areas of discoloration. I have a lot of them, but they're all quite small. So again, just little amounts right where you need it. I also get discoloration on my upper lip and around my nose, particularly in the summertime, I tend to get, it's like a mustache, but it's of hyperpigmentation. Very unfortunate, but happens to some of us. I am gonna take a little bit of concealer and put it on my eyelids. If you have a lot of discoloration, maybe your eyelids are very blue or pink or veiny, 
I would recommend using concealer on your eyelids, but again, you do not need very much. So I know that looks like a lot of concealer, but it's very strategically placed. It's actually not as much as I think it appears. And I do like to blend my concealer out with the sponge. This is just a Wet n Wild Beauty Sponge. I'm just lightly going to blend all of these areas out. By the way, my sponge is lightly damp. Okay, there we have it, concealer is all done. I am going to apply a little bit of powder. Again, I do this strategically. Since my skin is very dry, I don't like to put powder all over, only in areas where I get some settling or where I want to lock the coverage in. So I like to start on my eyelids because that is one of the places that I tend to get a bit of settling first. So I'm just going to take a little bit of powder. I'm just using my Rimmel Stay Matte on this small powder brush. Set those areas down. Before you powder, make sure one more time that nothing is settled into your lines. So I have some lines here between my brows, up on the forehead, I'm just using a little bit. And then also down here on the sides of my mouth and nose. And if I have any large blemishes, I'll also powder those areas just to make sure that concealer locks in place. But that's gonna do it for concealer for now. I'm just gonna fill in my brows really quickly. I don't really have any major revolutionary tips for the brows. I'm just gonna do what I typically do, fill in the underside. I think brows are one of those things I do not pretend to be an expert on. It's kind of just do what works best for you. Maybe play around a bit with different products and see how you like to fill them in. Somebody's lifting weights over there, you guys, I'm sorry. My boys are all officially home for summer and somebody is doing some weight lifting at noon on a Friday. Okay, let's move on to the cheeks. I'm gonna show you guys bronzer, blush, and highlight. Now, I like to do all three of these steps. You definitely don't need to do that. You can just bronze, maybe bronze and highlight, or maybe just blush and highlight. But I'm just gonna talk you guys through kind of what I typically like to do. So I've got my butter bronzer right here, just a good drugstore bronzer. This is the light bronze version. I'm just gonna take a nice powder brush. This one's nice and loose. This is a Sydney Grace powder brush. You can really use anything quite large. I like using a large bronzer brush. So I'm just gonna take a little bit in my brush and I like to apply this right below the high point of my cheek. So it's kind of right in the hollow and then kind of moving up on that angle right there. This is gonna just add a little bit of color and shape to your face. If you have a more round face, you can use a bronzer that's more of a cool toned shade. Trying to think of one in particular like this. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow. This is pretty cool toned. I would, I would say this is a little bit more of like a sculpting, has more of a sculpting quality to it. I often get asked the difference between a bronzer and a contour, and I know that they are different. I generally prefer bronzing more than contouring, but I think they're somewhat interchangeable. Both of them add a little bit of shape to your face, a little bit of color. I think one just sculpts and shapes more than the other. So as you can see, that just gave my the perimeter of my face a little bit of color. I always like to apply it in that area and then also just up along my temples right here. I don't like to go right here. I kind of just keep it like in this area right there. That's where the sun would naturally kind of tan me anyways. And I like to keep this spot open for highlighting later. So that's just how I like to do it. You can definitely add some bronze to your nose or some contour to the sides of your nose. I rarely do this, on occasion I will. It's not really something I am in the habit of doing regularly. I will sometimes take it down the side of my neck just to make sure the coloring of everything is kind of matching and looking cohesive. But that's pretty much it. You can see that just gave my face a little bit of color, a little bit of shape. My number one recommendation when it comes to bronzer is having a good fluffy, loose brush. I like something relatively large like this. I have this one right here, much larger. A larger brush, I think, makes it look more natural. I find when my brush is too small, it requires too much strategy and placement and having a larger blush just makes it all kind of blend and look seamless. But again, that's just me. Okay, we're gonna apply some blush. Today I'm just gonna use this classic blush. This is Luminoso from Milani. I like to apply my blush a little bit more in the center and a little bit up higher, especially if you are a little bit older. I like to put my placement of almost everything just a little bit higher, just kind of lift my face. It's like an artificial facelift. Maybe that's just in my head. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this on just a smaller fluffy brush. You can use anything from this. I'm not that picky with my blushes. I don't mind an angled brush either. Just nothing too large. You could actually even use that same powder brush that I used for my bronzer, but just use the top part of it instead of the side of it. So I just have this brush right here loaded up. We're gonna just kind of tap that 
right on the apples of the cheek and then work our way back into where that bronzer, like just have it like fade into that bronzer. Now this blush actually does have a little bit of sheen in it, so I could probably skip the highlighter today. I won't, but you could. I do like to make sure that this section right here stays free of color. You don't want this color to meet up with your nose. You wanna have a little area here that is just showing your natural skin color, kind of separate your cheeks from the rest of your face. And I also wouldn't go too wide with it either. If you do find that you want a little bit strong or a little bit wide, my favorite tip, this is one of my all time favorite makeup tips, is to have your beauty sponge on hand that you may have used with your concealer and just lightly tap around the edges and you can even use the back end if you went in a little too heavy handed. I actually think mine looks great, but sometimes I will tap over the top of it just to make sure it's nice and blended and sunk into the skin. Takes away that kind of powdery finish as well and just makes it look very natural. So there's bronzer and blush. Let's add just a little bit of highlight. I'm gonna take this one. This is from Laura Mercier. This is a more natural highlighter. This is the Matte Radiance Baked Powder in Highlight 01. It actually reminds me a little bit of Essence Pure Nude. So I'm just gonna take my highlighter brush on again, a smaller fluffy brush like this. You do want this brush to be quite small because you wanna be strategic with where you put your highlighter. So I like to apply my highlighter just right on the top of where my natural cheekbone is. I don't wanna to go too close to my eye. I do have fine lines right here. You don't wanna highlight those fine lines. I also don't wanna go down too low. So I like to just place a dusting right there. And I pull it in almost to the center of my cheek, avoiding this center section right here where I have some larger pores. The more texture you have on the skin, the further back you'll probably wanna keep your highlighter. This highlighter is actually pretty natural though. It doesn't seem to emphasize texture too much. So I usually start there and then I like to apply a little bit of highlighter just under my brows. I like to put some just on the bridge of my nose, sometimes on the front of my nose. And then I like to also apply it kind of all over my lips. And I know this looks a little bizarre, but once I go and finish my lips, some of this will kind of blend in. It just kind of highlights the high point of your lips right there. If you have a lot of strong lines on your lips though, which I am getting as I get older, you might wanna be a little bit more careful because the highlighter is going to emphasize those fine lines. I actually like to apply the highlighter and then take my sponge and just kind of press most of that into my skin, lifting the excess so it looks a little more natural. There we go. So there are the finished cheeks. Very, very pretty. Okay, now I'm gonna apply some eyeshadow. I'm not gonna go into details on eyeshadow. I did just post an eyeshadow video recently, so I will link that for you guys right here if you missed that one. I'm just quickly gonna go in with these three shades right here just to add a little bit of color to my eyes. So there's just a quick, simple eye look. The only detail I want to emphasize when it comes to applying your eyeshadow, if you are a little bit older, I always think it's nice to have a nice bright shade on the inner part of your lid, just to open up your eyes, make them look a little bit brighter. The light reflecting off of that lighter shade will just help attract light to your eyes, which I think is always a good thing, especially as you get a little bit older and things start to kind of look a little bit more shadowy and saggy. Having that brightness in your eyes is always a good thing. So now we're gonna go on to mascara and light now, I almost never show you guys this part. I kind of skip right through it, but there are some very, very important tips when applying eyeliner and or mascara that I don't often share with you guys. First off, we are gonna curl our lashes. I just have this very simple e.l.f. eyelash curler right here. I'm just gonna give my lashes a quick curl. I recommend getting very practiced at this. This is one of the best things to open up your eyes a little bit, whether you have long or short lashes unless your lashes are naturally extremely curled, I would recommend giving them a curl to open them up so when you put your mascara on, it's not weighing down the light that's coming into your eyes, it's actually opening them up. Okay, so for liner, my number one tip when it comes to applying liner, whether you're using a pencil liner like this or a gel eyeliner or a liquid eyeliner, is to make very sure that you apply your liner right at your lash line. So you do not ever want to see liner and then skin and then lashes. You want that to be completely dark and seamless. Your liner almost becomes an extension of your natural lash line. So to do that, you really need to press it. Don't just draw it above your lashes. You want to draw it almost directly in your actual lash line where your lashes actually grow out of your, your eyes. Don't be afraid to kind of get down in there 
I also, when it comes to eyeliner, you always want to make sure that you draw your eyeliner in a slightly upward angle to kind of follow the natural line of your lower lash line. It's going to help to lift your eyes. Make sure you don't draw them straight out or certainly down because that's going to actually like weigh your eyes down like this. And if you're a little bit older, nature's going to be doing that anyway. So you want to help, help yourself out a little bit. Use your finger to kind of blend that and pull that angle where you want it to go. I love this liner. Wet n Wild Simma Brown now. Best liner ever. I actually had a friend of mine come up to me at church a couple weeks ago and say, oh my gosh, I finally tried out that Wet n Wild liner. I've been looking for a good eyeliner for years after one that I loved had been discontinued. And I finally found it with this Wet n Wild liner. She was so excited and I felt so validated. It was great. <laughs> now, I like to apply liner to my waterline, which is like, directly below. You don't need to do this as long as you get your liner right inside your lashes. So there's my liner. You can see I've got the nice kind of slightly upward angle. It's still pretty natural looking and it is right up against the roots of my lashes. So you don't see any skin between my where my lashes come out and where the liner ends. It's just nice and dark. Now let's apply some mascara. Let's use this one right here. This is one of my favorites. This is from Tower 28. You really can use anything. Maybelline Sky High is a drugstore favorite of mine. Essence Lash Princess. I'm currently really enjoying the BH Cosmetics Bold Eagle Mascara, but we'll just use this one for today. Okay, so I'm actually gonna zoom you guys in just a bit, or a lot, I'm gonna zoom you guys in a lot. So my number one tip with mascara, don't be shy. Get the mascara brush right up into the roots of your lashes. You don't just want to apply mascara to the ends of your lashes especially if you don't have the liner on. Sometimes I will notice other people that have applied their mascara. You can see the ends of their lashes are coated in mascara, but where their lashes come out of their, grow out of their eyelid, they're not coated with mascara. So it almost looks more artificial. You want your lash, I mean, mascara looks artificial anyways, but you want it to look seamless. You don't want there to be an obvious line of where you applied your mascara. So don't be afraid to get that brush right up at the roots of your lashes. You want to almost fill it on your lash line. I know some people have very sensitive eyes and this is something that takes a little bit of practice. You do get used to it. And also you can play around with different mascara brushes. This one is, I don't think it's too pokey. I know some ones can be a little bit on the pokey side. So if your eyes are more sensitive, the Maybelline Sky High mascara is one I would recommend because the even though it's rubberized, it's a very soft rubberized brush that's not overly pokey. So you can really get up in there to the very base of your lashes. So you guys see how my mascara goes all the way to the roots of my lashes. That is one of my number one tips I could give you guys. It makes such a big difference in how your eyes look. It looks so much more professional. I, it just looks so much better. And if you find that one particular mascara is a little bit, makes your eyes a little too sensitive, it's gonna require a little bit of trial and error as far as which mascaras are gonna allow you to get right up there basically into your eyeball. <laughs> I mean, you're almost, you're literally touching your eyelid when you apply mascara this way, but it makes the biggest difference. So I like to give a nice healthy coat on the top lashes. Then I like to just barely coat my lower lash line. I just like to go right at the roots. I don't usually do a fresh dip. I just go with what's left on the wand and just wiggle it right at the roots. My lower lashes are a little long and I don't like them to look heavily coated in mascara. That's just me personally. So just play around with it. I just wiggle my lower lash mascara right at the roots and then call it good. Sometimes I'll go in with a clean spoolie and just kind of brush them out. Particularly on the inside of my eyes, I don't like a lot of lower lash mascara. I just like it to give me a little bit of like a feathering down there. And that's basically it. Do you guys see that? Fully coated all the way from the roots to the tips. All right, and here are the eyes all finished. Don't they look beautiful? Hopefully those tips will help you guys out. I see so many people doing this wrong. Again, it's not a big deal. Not that I'm judging anyone to each their own. There are no rules in makeup, but I do think it looks so much better and more, not more natural. It just looks more flawless when you do it that way. Last tip is for the lips. If you are over the age of 40, I have noticed my lips seem to be deflating every year of my life. They seem to be getting more lines and they seem to be getting smaller every year. I don't do lip fillers or anything like that. I don't foresee that I will be. It's just not something I'm really interested in, especially when I know makeup can help me out a little bit. So my number one tip for the lips, 
is to use a good lip liner that's nice and long wearing and just a basic gloss. That's kind of all I have been doing for the last several months. You wanna pick a lip liner that's nice and long wearing. If you have a lot of lines around your lips, so maybe you're over the age of 50, I am starting to get a few. I have like one large line on this side and one on this side and I can see that I'll likely get more over the next 10 years. The more lines you have, you wanna pick a long wearing lip liner that also doesn't feather. I think the Charlotte Tilbury lip liner, it's very long wearing and it also feathers probably the least of any lip liner in my collection. I personally have other lip liners that I love and use that are drugstore that last just as long as this one, but they're more creamy, so they have a tendency to feather into your fine lines a little bit more. This is a very thick, waxy lip liner, but that also makes it the best if you have more lines in your lips. It is also a little bit more expensive. A couple other that I love, the LA Girl Intense Wear Auto Liner and Nonstop Nude is one of my favorites. Essence 8-Hour Matte Comfort Lip Liners are amazing and last a long time. The LA LA Girl Shockwave lip liners are very long wearing and then I also have recently discovered these ones right here. These are from the brand About Face. Really nice and creamy, last a long time and in very beautiful colors. Let's use this one today. This is the shade False Alarm. It's kind of a deep corally berry tone. So there it is right there. Again, this one's really nice and creamy. So my tip with lip liner, this does take a little bit of practice. You want to find the very edge of your lip and then you want to line just slightly like hanging over the edge with a fingernail above where that natural lip line is. Let me zoom you guys in again for this. Okay, here we are again. I will try to stay in focus. So I generally like to just line my, overline my lips just about from 10 to two on the top and then from, what would that be on the bottom? eight to four. I don't like to line my lips all the way into the corner of my mouth. I just think it looks a little bit less natural. That's just a preference thing, but I do like to overline just a little bit. So I'm just going to demonstrate for you guys right here. So here's my natural lip line and I'm just going to fudge it slightly over that edge right there. Then I go to about right there. And then I actually like to take a clean finger. This is just to help the lip line look a little bit more natural. I actually like to smudge that into my lips and kind of pull it down a little bit, some of the color. Just so I'm not left with an obvious line. Do you guys see the difference? Still looks natural, but it's just helping me out a little bit. And my lips are slightly uneven. So I will overline just a tiny bit more on this side, but again, I try not to go too overboard, pun not intended, with the overlining, because I don't want it to look fake. So there's my top lip line, same on the bottom, starting in the center. The bottom I actually can be a little bit more aggressive, I guess, with the overlining and actually line slightly below my natural lip and then I start to cling closer to my natural lip line as I get further in. Sorry guys. The biggest secret is the smudging. So you're going to maintain the color, but it's going to smooth out the line to make it look more natural. And also just because it looks more natural, it's not that obvious that you've overlined your lips. So there we go. As you can see, because I smudged some of that color in, you can't really tell where the color ends and begins so much. Then we're just going to top it with a lip gloss. I'm just going to take this lip gloss. It's just from Tower 28. This is the shade Oat. Really anything will do. And there we go. Do you guys see how much better that looks? They're a little bit more full, but they don't look artificial. It's like my natural lips with just a little bit of assistance. All right, and this is the completed makeup look. Nice, simple, it's kind of natural looking, but still very well polished and put together. Everything's just kind of enhanced. Now, I don't claim to be an expert. I don't claim to know everything or be a professional. These are just some tips that I have learned as I've gotten older and as I have been playing with makeup for a long time now. They're the tips that I use every day and that I find super essential, especially as I'm now 
over that 40 age mark, which brings with it its own set of challenges. Take it or leave it. Try some of these tips out and see what works for you. I do recommend experimenting. See what you like, what you don't. There is no right or wrong way to do things, but hopefully some of these tips might help you guys out. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope that you enjoyed this one. I want to give you guys one more reminder if you haven't yet subscribed. I hope you'll consider doing that before you leave, and I will see all of you in my next video. Bye. My 13 year old is weightlifting. He's just finishing up. We'll just wait a minute for him to put the weights away. Literally, we have like a weight tower on the back side of this wall, like up against the back side of this wall, so very loud.